Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch, a Japanese horror film from 1968. Now this movie is notable for a few reasons. First of all, it was directed by Noriaki Yuasa, who is most well known for directing a bunch of the Gamera films from the Heisei era, those old school monster films. Second, this was based off of some manga by Kazuo Umezu, who was a very influential author who has been around since the 1960s. Now there have been a bunch of films based on Umezu's works or connected to Umezu in some way. Now in my Asian horror playlist, I did mini reviews of 12 of these films. The Snake Girl and the Silver Haired Witch, Baptism of Blood, Cat Eyed Boy, God's Left Hand, Devil's Right Hand, Tamami the Baby's Curse, Mother, and all six of the Kazuo Omezu Manga Horror Theater films. Okay? Now, on top of those, there was also a dramatic thriller called Orochi from 2008, I believe, that was also very good. Every single one of these titles that I mentioned are worth watching. Some of them are pretty cheesy, alright? But... They're very entertaining in their cheesiness. And some of them are pretty serious and they work that way as well. Uh, there has only been one film based on Umezu's works that I have not enjoyed. And that was The Drifting Classroom. The film, which I thought was awful. <laughs> I thought it was, that's like one of the worst Japanese films I have ever seen is The Drifted Classroom. So if you're somehow able to get a hold of it, Good luck with you in sitting through that one. But everything else I've enjoyed. <clears throat> so we have a pedigree behind the Snake Girl and the Silver Haired Witch. But what is this film about? So recently retrieved from an orphanage, a little girl gets situated in her family's mansion but soon discovers that a malicious, disfigured girl is secretly lurking in the shadows. Now, the plot is pretty basic on its surface, but there is some stuff to think about in this, like what is real and what is in the mind of our protagonist. So that element comes into play here. It makes it pretty engaging. I'm always a fan of horror films involving small children because I think we don't see them as often as we probably should. You know, spooky films with kids is a great thing. And it gets younger kids into the, the horror genre, which I think is pretty... I think it's a good thing. I think little kids can handle more than what uh, adults think they can handle. So anytime we could get little kids watching films like this, I think that's, that's good. Now, we meet our cute girl uh, protagonist after the opening scene. Okay, uh, The opening scene is <clears throat> uh, a person murdering the maid of this household. That's the opening scene of this film. And then we meet our protagonist. It was a pretty cute kid, very kind at heart, good girl. She arrives at her home, and she's curious as to what's going on here. She snoops around the house, uh, investigating some odd occurrences that she observes. Like, for example, her mother will leave out food, you know, at times for someone who apparently isn't there. You know, so she's like, well, wait, somebody else is in this house. You know what I mean? She gets a little curious and she snoops around. You know, what exactly is going on here? She tries to figure it out, but must then deal with the consequences of interacting with this mysterious disfigured girl who lurks, lurks in the shadows and may not be so kind of at heart as she is. And then we get some pretty interesting interaction between all of these characters. There's definitely like a... Uh, I would say like a power dynamic into this film that I found very interesting. You know, some characters have, I don't know, more of a control of what happens within this household than other characters. And that's a big play in the film, which I thought it was pretty neat. It's also a very female-centric story. Most of the power and agency in the film uh, comes from the female characters. <clears throat> now, in terms of horror... Some of the snake attacks are pretty good. Again, remember, it's the snake girl and the silver-haired witch, all right? Also, there are a few weird dream sequences that are fun to watch. Very, I kind of like the special effects in this. Pretty neat. 
There are a few little surprises that I won't spoil. The ending of this film, like the finale, it's pretty lengthy and kind of intense. Kind of intense. I have read some reviews online for people who think that this movie may be too inappropriate for younger children, but I strongly disagree with this. I think most kids could handle this film. Obviously, if you have kids, watch the film first, you know, and then decide if your kids can handle it. But back when I was like seven or eight years old, I would have enjoyed this. <laughs> you know, like I always say, when I was a kid, I was watching Stallone and Schwarzenegger murder people, all right? And I was, I was, I was being subjected to films like Return to Oz, which is practically a horror film in its own right. So I think most kids can handle this, so just keep that in mind. Now, the mansion provides a nice environment. Uh, effects and makeup kind of hit or miss. I, I didn't really like the Snake Girl's full form when she shows up in her Snake Girl form. It looked kind of fake. But there are some other scenes where the makeup is a bit better. So it's kind of hit or miss in this. Performances are good. The little actress, uh, Yachie Matsui, is very likable. Unfortunately, she only has like a few acting credits in IMDb, which I was kind of surprised at. Uh, kind of a shame, because she'd had some acting talent here. She's charismatic enough for us to follow and stay interested in what's happening. Now, the runtime, 82 minutes. Less than an hour and a half. So, moves at a brisk pace, very easy to sit through. Outside of the special effects, I would say one of the other flaws in this film is that there are a few contrivances, maybe some script writing oddities and flaws, a few ridiculous moments near the end that are very unrealistic, but uh, that absurdity is already kind of baked into the premise of the film, so not a big deal to me, not a big deal. So I do recommend The Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch. Interesting title, interesting film. If you want to you know, discover some Japanese films from back in the day that are a bit atypical. Because in, in the late 1960s, Japan was making a lot of samurai era horror films. You know, Kuroneko, stuff like that. You know, they had uh, stuff like Onibaba and Kwaiden in the 60s. So this is a very different beast. It's set in like contemporary times in the 60s and in urban environments. So... That kind of sets this one apart from some of the other stuff that Japan was churning out during uh, that era. Definitely a good introduction to the films that are based on Kazuo Omezu's works. And like I say, if you can ever find a film based on Kazuo Omezu manga or somehow related to him, like if he directed it or whatever, check it out because there's a pretty good chance it's worth watching. Now this film, Snake Girl and the Silver-Haired Witch, Currently available on Blu-ray, and it got a tricked-out Blu-ray release just recently. So, yeah, pick it up. I think it's worth watching. And as always, I will see you next time.